Hey friends, welcome to a very windy, cool, crisp day here at Gardening with Creekside. It is a very fun day because, yes, it may be chilly, yes, the wind may be whipping and I may be in my big coat and scarf, but we are going to be planting our spring flowering bulbs today and it is very exciting because I can envision in my brain what the spring is going to look like with these more than 5,000 bulbs. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> Jenny went big this year and so we have over 5,000 bulbs that we need to get into the ground within the next day or two. What we're going to do today is I am going to um, show you the bulbs that I got. I'm going to show you how they came to me, exactly what they look like, and then we're going to go around to the different locations and I'm going to explain to you um, what bulbs are going to go in there, why I chose what I did, are they annuals, are they perennials, all of those wonderful things that, that we want to know about spring flowering bulbs because we preach here at Gardening with Creekside, right? We plant for four seasons of interest. And even though it is December, I am planting and thinking about the springtime and what beautiful colors I can have in the garden that I would not otherwise have. So here we go. All right, because we are in North Carolina, we are a zone 8A. This is very important for you folks who are in warmer zones. It will depend on the bulb, but there are certain spring bulbs that we have to pre-chill for a minimum of about six weeks in order to get the gorgeous flowers in the springtime. As a general rule, flat off the top of my head, if you are in warmer zones, you need to pre-chill your tulips and your alliums and your other um, bulbs that have to go through that pre-chill period in order to store up enough energy to give us those gorgeous flowers in the spring. How do you pre-chill your bulbs? Well, if you buy your bulbs from like mail order, one, if you get them from color blends, which is where I've gotten, this is my second year getting them from color blends. Last year, I just ordered them and they sent them to me and I pre-chilled them myself. What that looks like is we had an extra refrigerator in our garage and I put all the bulbs in there. I only had the bulbs in there and there was no other food or anything like that. You have to be careful about putting like apples and fruits because those fruits give off a natural gas, which is not good for the bulbs. So if you can just put them in there by themselves, that is perfect. And they sat in the refrigerator, refrigerator, not the freezer, for six weeks, a minimum of six weeks. What that does is it fakes the plant out and it thinks that it spent six weeks in a cold, dark winter. At that point, you then take them and you plant them in the ground. It's got to be in the fall, right? So even if it's December like it is right now, that's totally fine. Get them in and then they will come up in the spring and give you gorgeous flowers. If you don't have that step, if you don't have that luxury of having another fridge or in case like for me this year, you ordered way too many bulbs to go into a refrigerator, Color Blends will pre-chill them for you. It is a very reasonable fee that they charge for just doing a flat rate for all of your bulbs. I chose that. So when I ordered back in, I think it was August that I ordered my tulips and I went ahead and hit that pre-chill feature. They chilled them for me and they just arrived yesterday in their crates and on the front it says pre-chill, pre-chill, pre-chill. They have done it for me. I am ready to put them in the ground. So just know that if you're in warmer zones and you want to have beautiful tulips and alliums, you've got to pre-chill them. My daffodils, which are jonquils, I do not have to do. This is not a cross the board. Just do your research and be um, a, a wise student of your own garden and understand what you need to do in your garden. Saying that also, tulips for us are annuals. They will not reliably come back every year with beautiful flowers. I treat them as annuals. No, I'm not going to dig them up and try to save them because the process of having to make sure that they get enough food and stored up and stored properly for the next season is simply not worth it. I treat them as annuals. If you are blessed to live in an area where tulips come back year after year and are gorgeous, God bless you. You are one blessed gardener. We don't have that luxury here in the South. Now my daffodils, my jonquils, oh my gosh, they get bigger and better every single year. Uh, just not my tulips. All right, enough of that. Let's get down to the fun stuff. Let's see what we have. 
this is how my bulbs came from color blends now depending on your company is they're going to arrive in different uh, ways color blends uses these nice sturdy black crates that are wonderful i mean because you can reuse these year after year for just a multitude of things so what happens is, is they come in these crates, um, they had some white ties, and then they have this cardboard on top, right? So when you, the bulbs can breathe, they're good, and then we can come in here and we can lift them up. Now, see right here where it says pre-chill? They pre-chilled them for me, so we are, um, we're great to go. Also, you will get little info packets, and it tells you everything you need to know, like how to unbox them, choosing the right site, um, planting, planting depth, everything that you will need to know about your bulbs. You get a great little handy uh, handout on that as well. And then, right, planting pre-chilled bulbs. It tells me that they were pre-chilled, how to do this, um, and just how to take care of them. But it says, now that you have your bulbs, we urge you to plant them as soon as possible. So they've got to get in ASAP. So that is what we're going to do. Now, each of your bulbs will come in a bag. Depending on the bulb and how many you've got will depend on the size of your bag. Here we have Gigantic Star. This is a daffodil. Um, specifically, this is in the Jonquilla family. So it is great for the South. Had these last year. And y'all, they are spectacular. Um, we'll get into more of the information though later but so you're going to have attached right here so they've got a little uh almost like a paper clip that will attach to the bag has the name of your plant it says your count so you know exactly how many you have the size of them your color your bloom time how tall they will get and then what i love is right here on my tag it tells me that i need to plant them four inches apart so that's four to five per square feet and i need to plant them six inches deep so not four inches did i say four did i say four feet i said i think uh, i don't know y'all the wind's getting to me it's four inches apart so four to five per square feet and it's six inches deep so that is what it is going to look like when they come let's go ahead and talk about our supplies what do we have um of course i have biotone you could use if you had bulb tone you could absolutely use that i just happen to have a nice supply of biotone so i will use that with all of my bulbs and then i have two different um, augers here with power planter i have my five inch jenny's edition so this has the heavy duty tip on it which is great for my clay soil i can use this really nicely when i'm using that five inch i might be even sometimes i kind of cheat a little bit especially on the tulips and i'll put maybe two in per hole right and my daffodils as well so you can fit about two uh, bulbs with a five inch and then we have the three inch so the three inch is absolutely perfect for your bulbs because you can just go through and go bam 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 and you can just drill a ton of holes and if you have uh, somebody helping you one person can be drilling the holes and the next person can go sprinkle a little biotone and then drop the bulbs right in so using the auger makes quick work of this project now in certain areas i'm not going to be able to use my auger what i'm thinking specifically of are my raised deck boxes i mean i guess technically i could i'm not going to so what i'm going to use for that is my hori hori i absolutely love this hori hori I'll, we also have the felco one that has more of a rounded edge so you could use the felco one whatever hori hori it is that you have this will be great so on your hori hori on this one it tells me what my depth is it has a little ruler right here um, so when I'm planting if I need to go four inches I know it needs to be that deep if I need to go six inches it needs to be all the way up here in those deck boxes what I can simply do is take my hori hori jab it in pull it wiggle it around a little bit and then drop the bulb in there so we have that as well now the fun part what we're going to do we're going to walk around to the various parts of the gardens here at the house and over at the nursery and i'm going to uh, show you which bulbs that we are putting in those locations i'm going to show them to you so you can see their size and kind of give you a reasoning of why i chose those bulbs for that location so what we're going to do is start here at the house first we're going to head over to the back patio because we have smooch that needs to be planted here we are on the deck by the back patio because this is the main area where smooch is going to go. Now, 
I love the name of this blend. It is absolutely fantastic. Smooch is a beautiful blend of like pinks and reds. So various shades of pinks and the plants, the flowers themselves will actually kind of transition from a new bud to a mature flower. So this is going to be a really fun last. Well, this past year, right? So this past spring, my Megan was like, cause she loves, she inherited it from me. She loves having fresh flowers in the house. And of course in the springtime, it is tulips, right? And so this past spring, she was like, mama, can we plant pink tulips? That way I can cut them and bring them in the house. And I said, absolutely. So Smooch is a blend for Megan that we all get to enjoy because it'll be outside um, and she can cut to her little heart's content. I am planting these for her to cut and but she can we've got 400 of them. So if she if she were to cut all of them, we would have a gorgeous house inside. I know she's not going to cut all of them, so we will get to enjoy them as well. Where they're going to go is all back through here on the back patio. Here we have the deck boxes that I was telling you about. You were with me when we planted these with some violas. So we've got this beautiful uh, kind of a, a blue purple shade of a viola. So we've got those. We have got the Ascot Rainbow Euphorbia that I love and then Cardoon. So lots of fun, different kind of heights and textures and colors in here. What we will do is take the tulip bulbs that are right here um, and we will take that hoary hoary and anywhere where we see little holes, we're going to pop tulip bulbs in there, right? So all throughout here, we're just going to tuck them in and then come springtime, they're going to come up amongst all of these plants and we're going to have beautiful tulips that are going to be popping up. Now, let's talk about the bulbs and, you know, what you can expect from a nice, healthy bulb. Now, a nice, healthy bulb, you're going to have um, some of the paper um, skin on the plant, right? So you see that. The main thing is with your bulb is when you squeeze it, they're nice and firm. It's got a smooth texture. It doesn't look dried up and shriveled and nasty and smushy, right? It's nice and firm. Now, if you have a little spot like right here where it had gotten nicked and it looks a little moldy, it is fine. If it is firm, it is good to go. So some of them will have their paper skin on them. Some of them will have fallen off. You can see it looks like we have like a little bit of a, a piece of a growth right here popping up. Don't worry about it. Just get them into the, the soil right away and they will be perfectly fine. See, we got a little tip coming up right here. It is great. The main, main thing is when you're looking at your bulbs, right? Your tulips, your alliums, your daffodils is make sure that they're nice and firm. If they're firm, you are good to go. So they're going to go here. Uh, let's, let's go look to see where else I'm going to put them. Cause I got 400 of them. I can't fit 400 of them in these deck boxes. Another main area that they are going to go is this bed right here in front of the gardenias and my nine bark. So we are going to fill in this area right here with as many as we possibly can. We are just going to chalk it full. I want a mass right there. Then depending on, I might even, um, I might, I thought about even putting some here in front of the David Austin roses, but I know that I'm probably going to put some ranunculus and some anemones right there. So I think I'm going to hold off. I'm not ready to plant those today. What I think I'm going to do is, like I said, jam pack this in right here. And then we've got plenty of room here between the incredible hydrangeas, the pillow gardenias and the spireas. So what I may do is just uh, when I was standing up there on the deck boxes and looking down, I may just come in here and do them in groups. I think they would be really, really pretty kind of down here in front between the spireas and just do them in like, you know, masses of groups. So there'll be clusters, so like a cluster here, and then we can do a big cluster right here. And that way this whole little area will have them here, the deck boxes up there, and then right over here. I think we can fit 400. We can squeeze them in. So smooch, really sweet pink red tulips going back here in the back patio. Now we've got some going up at the chicken coops. Let's go look at that. 
here I am up at the chicken goop and the girls are talking to me so if you hear some squawking it's just the chickens now we are going to plant daffodils up here we call them jonquils growing up here in the south my mama always called them jonquils that's what I knew them as now that I'm an adult and I am a professional gardener, I know that daffodils, jonquils, jonquils are a type, a cultivar genius of daffodils. They are the jonquillas. So if you find jonquillas, that means that they are going to be perfect for the south. They can handle the heat and the humidity much better, say, than maybe some other different types of daffodils. You do not have to pre-chill them. Now, if you do, it does not hurt. Mine are pre-chilled, and it's not going to hurt them one little bit. Just know if you're in the south and you're debating, you know, which area you should go in as far as with your daffodils, if you can find the jonquillas, then you know that you are safe. Last year from Color Blends, I ordered Gigantic Star. Y'all, when I say <laughs> that this plant lives up to its name, I am not joking. From the moment you open up the bag and you see the bulbs, I wanna show you what these bulbs look like. All right, so I have two of them here, but they are huge. So you can get some that will look like the one on the right, where it is just that nice big bulb, right? It's huge. But then you're also going to get quite a few of them that already have two or more bulbs on it. They are attached. I go ahead and leave them alone. I leave them right there. I suppose if you wanted to separate them, you could. I'm not going to do that. I just like to leave them. But Gigantic Star, the bulbs are absolutely massive. And then the flowers that you get from Gigantic Star are stunning. They are tall. I want to say they're like 18 to 20 inches tall with the plant. They are that classic daffodil, right? Really, really rich, solid yellow. And they smell divine. They give off a delicious fragrance that really, when you plant them in mass, especially, or if you're up close to them, you will definitely smell the fragrance. It is a very sweet fragrance, high, high performer, and just was phenomenal. Planted them in mass uh, behind the dahlias in the phantom hydrangea bed. Could not have been happier with them last year. Gorgeous. When we did our daffodils, we planted them use the auger and I use like the nine inch auger on it and I planted maybe like four or five bulbs in groups together. I will probably do that again here or I'll plant them. I don't know. We'll see. I always say something and then the mood strikes me and I do something differently. But these are um, more deer resistant. So if you have problems with deer eating, say like your tulips, the daffodils, the jonquils are going to definitely going to be more deer resistant. These are perennials for me. Every year they come back bigger and bigger, um, better. They, they will naturalize. They're not invasive, but they will spread and give me gorgeous color. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, we're up here at the chicken coop. So I am going to plant them all amongst probably more so back here in the back between the, uh, I've got hydrangeas back there, fire lights. I've got of course, the um, the Nellie Stevens hollies, but I will tuck them up in different areas all throughout here. Now, as far as the maintenance on these, in the spring, after they bloom, they're going to be stunning, right? You're going to have those gorgeous yellow flowers, but with the foliage, you've got to leave the foliage until it naturally dies back. That is why we're not going to put jonquils within the confines of the signature garden because that is a display garden and we're going to constantly be changing it out and we won't always look primo. The thing that kind of drives Jerry crazy, and I'll admit it drives me crazy too, to a point, is that with the jonquils, you've got that green foliage after they bloom and you've got to leave it until it dies back. And that can, I mean, that can take, you know, a month, six to eight weeks for it to die back. I can't have that in the signature garden, but I can have it up here in my more personal cottage gardens that don't bother me at all. So that is what we're going to do. And that is why I'm going to put the, the daffodils up here. If you are a neat and tidy person, like you like the garden super neat and tidy and you don't like to have kind of ratty foliage, then maybe daffodils are not the plant for you uh, because what they need is to have that foliage to stay up so that they can get the energy from the sun and get all that great energy so that the next year they have the beautiful flowers. So I got 200 gigantic star coming up here to the chicken coop. 
Here we are at the entrance to the nursery and to our house and we are going to plant some of the best yellow tulips. Yep, that is <laughs> that's what they're called on color blends, the best yellow. So obviously this is going to be a gorgeous solid pure yellow tulip that is going to be about 20 to 22 inches tall and I have 50 of those. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I this is see, I practice what you preach, Jenny. I forgot where I had intended these to go. I didn't write it down, or if I did, I lost that note. So, <laughs> so I was like, hmm, 50 yellows. Where can we put 50 yellows? We're going to put 50 yellows right here at the mailbox. Yes, we are. So what the plan is going to be, I've got 50, which will be perfect number that we are going to plant those solid yellow tulips and we're going to put them behind on the back side of this flower bed. Of course, because remember this is at the entrance to the nursery and all the customers will come through here and see it. Plus, we'll see it every time we drive up to our house. So this will be a perfect spot because it is, it's got some nice depth to it right here. The 50, I'll make them fit just perfect in here. And then, if you remember, I told you that I had um, some anemones and ranunculus that I want to put in the ground. I already have them. And I have some flaming red ranunculus. Um, and they are not ranunculus, sorry, anemones. I have got gorgeous solid red ones. I mean, they are bright and they are beautiful. So we are going to put them in the front of the flower bed. I will not do that today because um, I am not ready to, to do those today. They do have to, to soak for about four hours in some water. And I've got my hands full right now today with plenty of tulips. So I will get the anemones planted at a later time than the tulips. But it will be a gorgeous display of yellow and red all together. So that is what we're going to do. Now, got some going down to the nursery. Just got one or two down for the nursery. So let's head down there and see what we're going to plant. All right, my friends, so here we are at the nursery. Yesterday, uh, my sweet people brought over the tulips that are going to be here in the signature garden over here to the barn. So we have got eight crates ready to go and ready to be planted here. We've got two different blends that are going to go into the signature garden. Another great thing that I love um, as I make my way around here with the color blends is when on the on the outside of the crate it will tell you what is in that crate so when I have this is one of the blends it's called super collider um, and so you can see exactly it tells you what is in there so I've got 600 of the super collider in these crates and so that just makes it really nice that you can um, know exactly kind of what is in the crates before you have to like open them up and dig through and figure out what is in there now okay so the super collider is the biggest blend that i have and that's going to be uh, reds and yellows and purples so it is a blend and they are going to be i try to get the tulips overall generally that are going to be early to mid bloomers because we have such an early season here as far as planting annuals i didn't want a lot of late bloomers on tulips i needed early and mid that way they can do their thing be gorgeous be beautiful we can rip them out and then put our summer annuals in the ground so super collider i have um 3600 of that bulb now originally when i purchased them when i ordered them the plan was is that they were going to go into the berm, the privacy berm um, that separates the nursery from the house. We were just going to do this massive, huge planting of them. And we're still going to plant some of them over there. But we're going to plant also, first what we're going to do is plant the nursery side of these raised beds for the signature garden. These beds are each 33 feet long and I'm thinking that we roughly have about three feet of distance from the edge of the rocks up to the sprinter boxwoods so not that we're going to have I mean it's definitely going to be a full multi-layered um, effect of the tulips but it'll be on both sides of these raised beds will be that super collider in a mass planting then whatever we have left over which should be more than half 
will then go into the privacy berm on the house side so when we're sitting on the front porch we can see them and enjoy them so super collider reds yellows and purples will be here next we have miss confection and miss confection i have a thousand of those so i think we're gonna have a uh, be able to put those somewhere else is going to go her main place is going to be here at the fountain we already have of course the violas that are in here really kind of a nice soft uh, kind of a purple purple white with a little bit of a yellow center miss confection is going to be more in that creamy white and pink with a little bit of a yellow hint in it and i am planning on chalking this Full of her so we will do multiple layers again anywhere there's a hole we're basically going to come through and just plant them solid just tons of them in here because I want to make a massive statement with these tulips right that is the beautiful glorious thing about the tulips is that when they're blooming man they are just spectacular and what I may do is because I really don't have plans for other additional um, places for misconfection I'm, I'm this is this is how I garden y'all I just think off the cuff so how pretty would it be if I then take the extras the leftovers and I plant them on the back side of the garden here um, between this is the glitters and glows viburnums right they're spaced about four to five feet well probably about five feet apart if not six feet apart and then I could do um, pockets um, like nice big areas right right here and I could put misconfection right in here I think that would be really pretty I think that's what we're gonna do see you know sometimes you just do some spontaneous gardening and that is what we just did here my friends so we will put the leftover misconfection we'll kind of have an idea of how many the numbers we have and we will fill them in right there so that is the plan for all of the bulbs what i'm going to do is <laughs> i think i'm going to start with uh the mailbox because that's only 50 and i'll get those done and it'll make me feel very accomplished and i'll feel really good about that and then we're going to go on from there um, we have all of our our folks here at the nursery are in various places jerry and andrew are working on installing irrigation at the new production greenhouse i've got my ladies that are down here working the nursery so i think we'll see how much help i get as far as planting all these today and then we'll just we'll get done what we get done today and then we will finish them up tomorrow so let's first go ahead and go up to the mailbox and get those done at the mailbox
All right, my friends. So, uh, <laughs> y'all are going to love this little story. Um, yeah, the bulbs have gotten planted and I really think the bulbs were multiplying in the bags. We are actually um, 24 hours since I last talked to you on the video um, because I was working in the patio, right? And I got um, smooch in the ground, got it all sorts of beautiful places, the raised deck boxes. Then we did around um, between the boxwoods and the gardenias, the boxwoods and the David Austin roses, got my little triangle planted. I still have 200 of those guys left to plant so I'm gonna put them like I talked about um, between the spireas so that will take care of that I still need to do the gigantic star daffodils up at the chicken coop those have not been done so that's another 200 so that's 400 bulbs I still have to plant and then I just we just didn't get around to doing here at the signature garden yesterday so we came back this morning and got those done and I thought okay well I have all my hands all my sweet people are here to help me We'll get this done, we'll get this knocked out, you know, well before lunch, and then I can move on to another project. Y'all, it is like 3 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and oh my word, oh, it has been very successful, and it is going to be an absolutely stunning spring. So let's talk about it because here we have um, at the signature garden, we talked about that misconfection was getting planted in the fountain. So we have the fountain is completely planted with misconfection. We've got that. Then we've got so much more of misconfection left over. So what we did is we came back in the curve of all four of these interior beds and it's a triple row. So here all the way over and then within the curve we have misconfection. So it will be stunning, let me back up just a second, that the fountain will be blooming then each of the curves will have that same tulip blend in it and the benches are going to go like right here in the grass so we'll get the benches installed in there um, later so all four one two three four of those beds have the misconfection in it and then i said hmm well we've got this whole flower bed right here of the glitters and glows viburnum so let's put some in there Y'all, we jam packed them. At first I thought, well, maybe we can plant some violas. That's probably, you can see those violas over there. We aborted that plan and just went straight for the tulips. There is a ton of tulips here in each of these beds. We were able to go, I uh, believe, five, five deep. So across here, there's five tulips. So five tulips across and then just jam-packed these two beds full of misconfection. So when you're standing at either side, it is going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous spring. The tulips all in these beds right here, in the interior curves, and then the fountain. So that is misconfection. We still have like 400 of them left, three, three to 400 of them left. So they're gonna, I'm gonna plant them tomorrow in the garden boxes up by the cottage garden at the house. So there's that. Now let's talk about Super Collider because Super Collider, we had um, 3,600 of those. Jerry asked me, he was like, honey, did you, like, how did you come up with this number? Did you measure, what did you do? And I was like, yeah, well, you know, I just, I just kind of guessed. So next summer, when I go to order my bulbs, I'm not allowed to order bulbs without being supervised by someone with some math skills and some sanity because dear heavens y'all holy cow all right so it, it, it has been a humdinger of a day the nursery side of the raised beds have super collider so these have all of the super colliders in them i believe we went four four rows deep so there's four rows down and then of course they're jam-packed in there all together so both sides of those guys have the super collider in them and then we had so many more left over we're like okay to the berm we go to the privacy berm so we went to the privacy berm and if you remember all where we had petunias last year we slammed it full of 
the Super Collider tulips. So every empty space on the house side of the berm has got tulips in it. It's going to be stunning. Then we still had tons of bulbs left over. Okay, where can we go next? So next we came over here to the nursery and this is the flower bed that we plant the new introductions in. This is kind of like that new introductions bed of the annuals from Proven Winners. So obviously, you know, it's winter time. We don't have any new introductions and annuals. And so you can see that it looks like it's been freshly tilled because there are the super colliders in the entire bed. The entire flower bed is filled with those um, beautiful bulbs. And at the risk of y'all thinking I'm an absolute looney tune, um, we still had more bulbs left over. So I felt like Oprah. You know how Oprah does like the giveaway and it's like, you get a new car and you get a new car and you get a new car. Except Jenny was like, you get a bag of tulips and you get a bag of tulips. So everybody is taking home a bag of tulips. Anywhere from like 300. So Randy took home a bag. Cece's taking home a bag. Um, Mary Claire took some home to her mama. Andrew was taking some to his mother-in-law. Um, Alyssa took a bag to her house. Um, so yeah, everybody got a bag of tulips, uh, the Super Collider blend, and uh, yeah, it was their Chris Christmas bonus, as one of them said, and Cece said only a gardener would be excited about getting a Christmas bonus that requires work, <laughs> which it does, but it'll be a beautiful spring at their house. So we're just sharing the Creekside love and the, uh, the, the bulbs. So we are, we're done. It is, we're, we're calling it quits. I will get the rest of those bulbs in the ground. Um, tomorrow. So I've got the 200 of the smooch and then the 200 of the gigantic star and we're calling it, it we're done. Done, 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 done. So I told my employees and everybody here, I was like, don't you ever dare even think about buying some fresh cut tulips next spring. Just come to the nursery and cut because we're going to have a gazillion uh, flowers here. So it is going to be a stunning spring here at Creekside Nursery and um, next year I will be much more uh, methodical and planned on how I buy tulips. In my defense, the signature garden, the final design was not planned when I ordered the tulip bulbs. And so that's where a little bit of the uh, quote issue came in from. And then I clearly overestimated how many the berm needed. So I'll make sure and do some better math next year. But anyway, it all worked out fine, right? Again, it's going to be beautiful. Of course, you'll get to see it in the spring. And um, yeah, maybe we can get our sweet friends, our employees, our Creekside family to share some pictures from their house this spring as well. So. Anyway, y'all, we're tired. We're done. Our backs hurt. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Bye.